Greetings, welcome to my engineering channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a SOLIDWORKS tutorial and I'm going, going to be showing you how to create a gear train in SOLIDWORKS. Let's begin. All right, take mini me and put them right there. So we have SOLIDWORKS open here and what I'm going to do is create a new assembly. Now normally when you uh, create an assembly, you want to put parts that you've already made into it, but in this case we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the sketch tab and we'll select sketch. I'll select the feature tree and I'll select the front plane. I'm going to make sure my units, I'll select down here, I need to move my video out of the way. I want to be in millimeters for this, so we'll do it in millimeters. Now notice my sketch seems to have vanish so we'll have to start that over again anytime you change units it will kick you out of the sketch you've created and if you haven't started haven't done anything in the sketch it will start you over so i'll select the front plane um, in the sketch and i'll select center line now um, for this tutorial i'll simply be doing two gears one with 40 teeth and one with 10. um oh it's a very small line now um I'm going to make the, give them a module of two, which means that they have their radius corresponds to the number of teeth. So if uh, my first gear is going to be 10 teeth, then I want that to have a radius of 10 millimeters. Uh, likewise, my gear with 40 teeth will have a radius of 40 millimeters. So I've created two construction lines. Um, they're fully defined because they're both horizontal and they're both uh, coincident with the origin. I'm going to grab a circle, and the circles are more for just reference. They aren't necessary for this, but I like them because it shows me what's going on. So our sketch is fully defined. Always make sure your sketches are fully defined, and I will exit. Now, I will select SOLIDWORKS add-ins and select SOLIDWORKS toolbox. Then I'll come over here on this side to the design library. It's taking a minute to think about it. All right. So I'll open the toolbox and then I'll open ANSI metric, open power transmission and select gears. I'll grab a spur gear and I'll bring it onto the screen. And uh, we set the module to two, number of teeth to 10, pressure angle of 20 and face width to 15, nominal shaft diameter of eight. That's what we'll do for now. We'll select okay and it's gonna try to insert another gear but we don't wanna do that. Make sure you have your gear settings um, selected properly before you place your gear because it's hard to edit the gear afterwards. You can always just get a new one though. So we'll grab another gear and this time we'll give it 40 teeth. I'll select OK and escape because it'll try to place another one. I'll go back to the assembly tab over here and I'll select mate. And then what I'm going to do is select the feature tree so I can see and I'm going to select the front plane and then I'm going to hit this button so I can mate a couple things to the front plane. So I want that face of that gear and that face of that gear. Now, notice that this one didn't move. There's an F next to it, which means that it's fixed. So I'm going to need to, I'm going to make this mate later. I need to f uh, f resolve this issue. So you see that there's an F here. That means this gear is fixed. I can't move it. This gear I can move. So in an assembly, usually the first component that's placed is defaulted to be fixed. So we need to float it. So we'll right click on this and then you'll see there's float here. Um, if a component is not fixed, you'll it'll say fix. So you can either float or fix it. So we'll float this one. Now they both have minus signs, which means that they are not defined. Their position is not defined. Okay, now we can do what I wanted to do earlier. So I'll select front plane or mate front plane and then I'll hit this button, the paperclip button, which mean basically just means I'm mating multiple things to that entity. I'm gonna select this face of that gear and this face of the little gear. Okay, so now both um, gears are mated to the front plane. Great, we'll make them and we made them coincident. Now we wanna make sure the gears are um, aligned with these circles. So I'll select this circle and then I'll select the edge of this gear and I'll make a concentric mate. And I do not want to lock the rotation. I want the gear to rotate and I'll select OK. I'll do the same thing for the 40 tooth gear. 
and there we are. Now we have two gears. I can hide this sketch to uh, just make it look cleaner. Now I'm going to orient myself perpendicular to the gears, and we need to make sure that the gears are not touching at all for this next step. Otherwise, SolidWorks will crash, which is what happened the last time I tried to film this. So select Move Component, Free Drag, Physical Dynamics, and then I'll select all these components, or just these components, so it doesn't freak out. And we'll hit, oh shoot. Um, and this, again, this is only if you just want to move the the gears around. And, you'll, and you can drag um, the gear, maybe, resume drag. Um, and now you can move the gears around. So notice that if I zoom in the gear, it's simulating a physical contact or physical dynamics. So the gears aren't touching or they're, they're touching, but they, um, they aren't moving through each other. So there's actually, it's actually like simulating real physics, um, again, but that's only temporary. So now if we want to actually do a motion study, I can select motion study. I want to make sure that I go to add-ins and enable SOLIDWORKS Motion. If you don't have SOLIDWORKS Motion, you can't do this, but it's okay. Um, and then I'll select Motion Analysis. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have set up a solid contact between the two gears. So I'll select Solid Bodies, and I'll select this gear, and then I'll select this gear. Um, now I can change the type of solid contact. Currently the material is set to acrylic. I'm going to change it to Greasy Steel, which would be more realistic. Um, I'm going to change the frames per second to, I don't know, 60. Just that helps keep things uh, rolling smoothly. And then um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rotary motor to this big gear here. And I'll give it a speed of, um, let's say, 20 RPM. Um, and now I'll hit calculate. And we have two gears turning and they're not running into each other or anything like that. I can set the playback mode to loop and I'll, I'll let's slow it down real slow so we can watch what's going on. If we zoom in, we can see that the gears are making contact. You can see that this gear is um, turning without going through the teeth. So the teeth are, they're making proper contact. You can speed this back up to 1x. All right, and that's how you make a gear train and simulate it via SolidWorks motion in SolidWorks. Thanks for watching.